chilly night in the Rose City, but hey, we promised to heat things up with WCC Women's Basketball. We're at the Child Center where tonight the Portland Pilots will host St. Mary's. We are down to the final games of the regular season and the Pilots still have conference title hopes. Good evening, everybody, and shots joined by my broadcast partner. That's my good friend Jennifer Mountain, former standout at Gonzaga in the WCC coaching ranks as well. High stakes game, so much to play for. Walk us through it, Jennifer Mountain. Well, like you said, I mean, right now, Portland is sitting 12 and two, alone in second place. But this next two weeks is be huge. One win puts them in that spot alone, putting them in the bye going into Monday's semifinal in Vegas. However, we've talked about the fact that the conference title is still at stake. If Gonzaga drops one, who knows what can happen? The top five teams are going to play one another in this next two weeks, and movement can go up and down really Really fast they still have that hope alive all right as far as the series in this season goes against st mary's the pilots won game one on the road all right, that started a four-game win streak. Obviously, they're looking for the season sweep. You're right, and Coach Meek has never lost to St. Mary's in that game. Their leading scorer, rebounder, got hurt, but she is healthy. She is back in a much different St. Mary's team right now. Yeah, that's Allie Bamberger, and we will keep an eye on her tonight. Now let's talk about the Pilots. You got to talk about Alex Fowler, front runner for the MVP. She absolutely is, and here is why. She is number one in points per game, total points, steals per game field goal percentage free throw attempts and made she is in top 10 in most categories her numbers are off the chart she scores at all three levels and does it against multiple double teams physical play and she has a scout target from everybody that enters the gym she is portland's all-time leader in scoring and rebounding she is the most versatile player in the conference and my vote for player of the year mine too all right when haley andrews went down with that acl a month ago mikkel meek goes from sub to starter and she's been terrific she has emerged this past three weeks she has been solid she has distributed she's organized and run the show she's playing at a really high level and has hit huge shots for them when they needed it she is one of the reasons that the pilots continue their success her tenacity on defense her competitiveness and her ability to understand what the team needs in certain moments has been really crucial all right it's portland's annual play for k pink game tonight love it pilots are looking to keep the magic going at the child center where they have been very good st mary's gunning for the upset we've got lineups and tip coming up next Time for WCC Women's Basketball. We're at the Child Center on the campus of the University of Portland, where tonight the Portland Pilots will host St. Mary's. Critical end of the season game for the Portland Pilots. We talked about so much at stake. Starting lineups look like this. Let's start with the home bunch, the Pilots. Lucy Cochran, keep your eye on her. She's healthy, she's rim protecting, she's blocking. You're absolutely right. Returning from injury, getting back into her groove. She is a huge presence in the shot blocking department and changes them defensively. 
All right, let's talk about St. Mary's. Ellie Bamberger is absolutely critical to this St. Mary's club. Only played the 15 minutes in game one, tweaking a knee. She's healthy and ready to go. Yeah, averaging 15 points, eight and a half rebounds a game. The Gales need a big performance from her on both ends of the floor. All right, now let's throw it to the third member of our broadcast team, Brenna Green. Brenna, what do you got? As you guys mentioned in that first segment, Alex Fowler, a candidate for the league's MVP award. Something interesting that UP head coach Mike Meek brought to our attention is that different coaches have different philosophies on how to vote for that honor. Some coaches vote for the player who played best against them. Other coaches look at how a player played against the league overall. Now, St. Mary's head coach Allison Fastnock says that her staff places a heavy emphasis on who played well against them. That is good news for Fowler who had 18 points six rebounds and three blocks the last time out in Moraga so we'll see how she does in round two tonight back to you guys love it Brenna heck yeah I mean I think the three of us Brenna <laughs> JMO and myself we're casting votes of course they don't count but we're casting votes all the same as the pilots start the game out with a quick triple by Bur uh, Burnham and that's a big basket right there to kind of get her going hasn't scored as much lately but they need her to be a big threat and Fowler again finding her on the perimeter Portland coming into this game 18 and 7 overall 12 and 2 in conference play the answer by St. Mary's the Gales at 12 and 14 6 and 9 in conference play and Whedon with the three you would expect nothing less from one of the greatest three-point shooters in West Coast Conference history you're absolutely right and that's going to be a huge thing that we look at all night long is not giving up threes and this is a big one Bamberger with that foul and that's a hard matchup for her. Alex Fowler pulling her to the perimeter, taking her off the bounce, and St. Mary's cannot afford her to be in foul trouble. And Bamberger leads this club with nearly 15 points a pop, eight and a half rebounds, and a great start for the Pilots and Burnham. But you can see they're trying to get her the basketball right from the get-go. Again, it's reestablishing her offensive threat. Here's Steele, the transfer out of Lehigh. Great table setter for St. Mary's. All right, Whedon, who's got a ton of family and friends here from Milwaukee, Oregon, never lost a high school game when she was in the prep ranks, and she is one of the most dynamic shooters you will see. Yeah, and you just can't give her, if you're Portland, you cannot give her that much room from the perimeter. You have to make her do something different and put it on the ground, but... That's a pretty big stat, never losing a high school game. Think about that now. And a couple of triples to start this thing. Last year, Whedon had 106 triples that broke her own single season record. Think about that now. Think about 106 of those three baggers. That's, that's nutty. That's a lot. That's nutty. That is. St. Mary's right do, did a nice job defending that baseline out of bounds. Got a deflection, goes back to Portland. The Pilots really efficient with their baseline out-of-bound play, so good defense by St. Mary's. Whedon's got all six Gales points, 6-5. Fowler going to the rim, trying to go right at Bamberger. Instead, it's one and done, and we're going to go the other way. Uh, and I know Fowler didn't finish there, but I think that's a smart move. So Hannah Rapp gives St. Mary's the three-point cushion. St. Mary's doing a nice job of getting quality looks. Two outside looks and then a great take right there by Rapp. Meek, going to keep that dribble alive. Burnham thought she'd step into the three. Instead, Fowler, kind of a wild shot from Alex. Yeah, I don't know if it got hit or just a little bit off balance there. What a great fake by Steele. Open look, Hannafin. That was a wild shot, and here comes the Pilots. And the Pilots do a nice job of just opportunity break, didn't have anything, but again, a kick out for Burnham, just an in and out, that was halfway down. Man, Basket didn't want it, a great look by Fowler who found the wide open Burnham. That thing looked like it was gonna go to the bottom of the net. Instead, St. Mary's with the ball and the lead. Inside. Thought Bamberger should have gone up with that one, J-Mo. I agree 100%. She, especially she gets positioned that low. Very skilled offensive player. She's got to go score that basketball. So Rapp will take a seat.
And a little bit of a drought for this pilot bunch. You know, that's something that they really are trying to pay attention to. Had quite a few droughts last weekend, struggled to shoot the basketball. Again, inside out. Nice job of finding the perimeter jumper, and Burnham again hits the outside three. Basket, no way it was going to spit that one out. Burnham with a scalding st start. She and Whedon have been going back and forth in the scoring department, eight apiece. 6.25 left to go in this thing. Inside look, Bamberger, and one. Yeah, and Raquel Meek just a little bit late on that weak side defense. Didn't have much of a choice other than just to foul her. Bamberger just way too strong right there. Bamberger, the transfer out of Washington, blew that ACL out while she was with the Huskies. Couple of surgeries, 16 months of rehab. And all she did is join St. Mary's, finally get cleared, and was last year's WCC Newcomer of the Year. She's done a terrific job, and I remember talking to her last year when she um, was here, and just the, the fit for her has just been terrific. And, uh, you know, they've gone through some things this season so far, but really likes the squad. She said she's got a great group of teammates and, and is enjoying her time there. Kelsey Lindsay joining the fray for the Portland Pilots. You know, it, it is a great fit for Bamberger. Her dad was a 1,000 point scorer for St. Mary's on the uh, men's basketball side of things. So when she decided to come home, if you will, yep. <laughs> I know I know, Proud Papa was saying, yeah, baby, let's go. Yeah, and nice for the parents, her parents to be able to watch her as often as she, they can. Dalton off the bench is gonna give it up to Steele. Good defense by the Pilots, forcing the wild shot. Look at Bamberg collecting it. Almost a turnover, but instead, it's Dalton scoring. Yeah, it kind of fell into Dalton's hand there. You're right, Portland almost with a turnover there, but uh, again, I think St. Mary's doing a nice job of taking Portland off the bounce, and there's a travel on Shear. Into the lineup for Portland, Liana Kaitu'u. So inbounding is St. Mary's, 13-8. Gales with the lead, 5.30 left to go in this first quarter. Tacey Whedon, the local kid wearing Gales gear, the hot start. Burnham just as scalding for the Pilots. And they're actually matched up together right now. Bamberger from way outside, front rim and off, ball tipped away, and that foul is gonna go against Dalton. Nice little pick and pop with Bamberger right there. She has that range. We're gonna be, you see so many different looks offensively for St. Mary's. They're gonna be four out, five out, four out, one in with her. She has the ability to shoot that three like we just saw, but uh, a lot of movement, a lot of ball movement, a lot of people movement. They don't stand still too often. Bamberger comfortable from beyond the arc. You gotta go out and close. Catch, shoot, rim and off, ball up for grabs and into the hands of St. Mary's. Well, good job just getting that tip on the defensive boards and they have always been a really good rebounding team, go hard to the glass. Not numbers wise probably so much this year just because they play a lot of guards, but uh, really have done a nice job and oh, you just cannot leave her alone. Oh man, Whedon all by herself. She's got three triples, that equals nine points and Whedon fills it up. You have got to be on her. Little miscommunication right there. I guess. Make you pay, that's for sure. Whistle blows that play dead. As Aspen Garrison picks up her first, team's third. You know, Portland on a little bit of a scoring drought right there, but come on back and we'll see if they can get it going on the offensive end. Burnham hot early for the Pilots, but that lead is dissipated because Whedon has taken over for the St. Mary's.
St. Mary's 13-3 run has the Gales leading Portland 16-8 here at the Child Center. Allison Fasnack, the interim coach for St. Mary's. Paul Thomas put on administrative leave and then fired in late January for the Gales. And you, know, you look at Allison, who's been with St. Mary's for the last 12 years, a natural fit to slide over. She's been the interim coach, doing a great job. Yeah, you know, the, the fact that she's been in the program for the last 12 years, the players know her. She's got a great relationship and in a tough situation, obviously, uh, doing a nice job and trying to rally the troops, that's for sure. So Kaitu picks up that foul, her first. Team's first. Frawley and Bruno onto the court for this pilot group. And you know, JMO, I think Mike Meek is trying to send a message. Let's get some hustle and grit on the floor and turn this thing around. Absolutely. And again, just we, we talked about the fact that they had some scoring droughts last weekend. And they have throughout the season one of their last seven from the field and then turnovers. You know, coming down the stretch here, you've just got to play clean basketball. Cochran back on the floor for the Pilots. Portland losing to 23rd ranked Gonzaga in Spokane last weekend. It was a critical game for both clubs. Pilots led by one at the half, but it was Gonzaga down the stretch. And the travel's going to go against Kirisomi. Jen, you were at that game, called that game in Gonzaga, the Pilots taking on a really quality Bulldog club. What kind of a bounce back effort are you looking for from the Pilots tonight? Well, you know, in that first half, both teams really struggled to shoot the ball from the three. I feel like they've gotten quality looks, but again, it's just those unforced errors right there that really have, have kind of bit them in the feet a little bit. And St. Mary's taking advantage of it, getting to the rim there. Wow, Dalton, nobody stopping her. She goes all the way to the cup, and the lead is 10 for St. Mary's. You know, if you're Portland, you don't need to panic. You just need to be smart. There's a great block right there. Oh, my goodness, T fantastic block. Garrison with the block. On the other end is Cochran tag teaming with Burnham, so both clubs getting aggressive with shots close to the rim as Fowler checks back in. She just has such great timing, comes from the weak side. Yep, nice timing. We talked about the fact that she's just kind of getting herself back, coming back from injury, getting into more of a groove, more minutes and rotations. Cochran injured against Washington State, it feels like forever ago, December 7th, and then she missed so many games rehabbing that foot. And now back, like you mentioned, JMO, in the rotation and getting those minutes so critical at this time of year. I love this combination with Fowler. Oh, yep. She walked. Over. Yep. Off balance right there. So did Garrison it. did a good job digging in against Alex. She did. And, and Alex, I, what I like that about that is she's trying to get in deep. That's the fourth turnover for mm. Portland in this quarter with three minutes to go. You know, Mike talked about the 17 turnovers against Gonzaga, saying that can't happen against any club in yep. this conference. And they've got four cough ups so far. Good defense by Bruno. Step and shoot. And the whistle will blow away from the shot as Kirisomi misses. And it looks like Garrison is going to pick up her second. I really like what the Gales are doing offensively. Penetrating, kicking, penetration, come behind for the three. They've gotten points in the paint, and they're hitting from the outside. So the combination, obviously, doing a nice job up by 10. Fasnack said, we need player and ball movement. And that has led to a 15 to 3 Gales run because that's exactly what St. Mary's has been doing. You're absolutely right. And you, you kind of like this combination with Fowler and uh, Cochran in the game right now, doing a lot of different movements for them, trying to get the ball inside. Five on the shot clock. Again, lots of whistles in this first quarter. Foul's going to go against Whedon, her first, team's fifth. Whedon with a terrific start, nine points, three for three from beyond the arc. Well, and, and for Meek, that's the first point scored by somebody other than Burnham in this quarter so far for the Pilots. 
and the toss ends a 430, and that means four minutes and 30 seconds. Seems like an eternity scoring drought for the Pilots. And I think if you are the Pilots, you gotta be pretty happy because they have the ability to create a lot of turnovers, get points on the, on the board quickly. Just gotta do a good job defensively and get quality shots. Nice extra pass. Bamberger throws it away. Bruno wants to push. Bruno all the way to the rim and scores. Well, that's MJ Bruno, two at T. Steals it in transition, gets to the rim, very athletic. There's another turnover right there by Meek, punching it from behind. Yep, poke checked away by Meek. Four nothing, pilot run, they're looking to add to it. The pilot's hanging tough despite the fact that Fowler has not scored in this game. Look at Cochran, one arm, and scores! She'll go to the line to try and complete the three-point play. Big effort by Lucy Cochran. Well, like I just mentioned, right on, right on cue, the ability to create turnovers, get transition buckets, get themselves going. MJ Bruno with the three, but a nice one-handed rebound and putback by Lucy Cochran. UP on a 6-0 run before that timeout. Good timeout, needed to kind of slow everybody down. So, J-Mo, I thought a foul was called on that play. Apparently not. Just an old-fashioned bucket at the rim with St. Mary's calling a timeout, 18-14. Well, she only had one arm in the beginning, so I don't see where there was a foul situation, possible foul, possible foul situation. All right, nice little run by the Pilots, all the same. 18-14. The lead was 10. And another mistake miscue by St. Mary's, allowing Portland to get back in this thing. I think Portland's length and speed, athleticism has kind of thrown steel here this last little bit. Five turnovers for St. Mary's in the last three and a half minutes. So that 10 point lead has gone bye bye. Buck 15 left to go in the first quarter. Fowler squaring up. And in the scoring column. Well, I'll tell you, I mean, she scores against double teams, triple teams, so much pressure. Finally got a, a good look at the rim. Eight nothing, pilot run. The 10 point deficit is now two with under a minute to go in this first quarter. Bamberger looking for the cutter and finds, what a nifty, nifty pass, and Hannafin scores. Beautiful pass. I mean, when you have your big that can read the defense and make that kind of a pass, you're gonna be in great shape. Fowler front rim and off. Tap back, beautiful play. New life for the Pilots. Keely Frawley right there, making it happen. 10 on the shot clock now for Meek. Starters duties now without Frawley, or excuse me, without Haley Andrews. One on the shot clock, nothing there. Steele has got to hurry. Bamberger wanted it, instead Steele, NBA three. Wow! That was deep. Steele is only a 23% shooter from beyond the arc, and that was an NBA bomb. You know, Steele butters the bread with her assists, but she had to put it up, and holy smokes, that thing was true. 23-16 Gales.
talking to the troops, fourth year at the University of Portland. That WCC championship in his first year really gave you the idea, J-Mo, that this guy not only was a great hire, but changing the culture, bringing the recruits in, and being a player in the WCC race every year during his tenure, it's right there. It absolutely is, and you know, like you said, the culture has been created. They're getting such high recruits now. Some Oregon kids that are staying at home, which is huge. And, uh, you know, the desire to get back to that championship game coming into this next couple weeks is huge for this team. Second quarter underway, 23-16. Gales with the lead. Steele with that bomb to end the first quarter. And here's Steele. Lehigh transfer. Bamberger throws it right into the hands of Fowler. That's the seventh turnover mm. by the Gales. And that's the biggest thing right now. The biggest difference maker is for Portland's nine points. Kaitu, like the mismatch, couldn't get it down into the hands <laughs> of Emmy Shear, and she puts it back. <laughs> Emmy Shear's first points of the game, and again, she's somebody that really has stepped up in the scoring category. We'd like to see her get going a little quicker. Whedon misses mid-range. Kaitu'u leaves it, and here's Shear. Ball on the deck, dumping it inside. Kaitu'u, this time at the rim and scores. Nice finish by Kaitu'u there. And that's another huge win for the Pilots when you're having a couple of your bigs stepping up and taking some of the pressure off of Fowler. Steal. Nice head fake and all the way to the rim uncontested. Five points now for Steele. Gives you about seven a pop. Crafty. Yeah. Last year, Steele playing with Lehigh. Led the nation in assist to turnover ratio. Kaitu blocked from behind. Kaitu sticks with it. Well, good job of staying with the play. I actually thought she had a right-handed layup right from the, the first pass, but good finish. Kaitu with a good shift off the bench. Whedon shows you why the mid-range just ain't working. I, I've got to be out, way out from beyond the arc. 12 points now for Whedon. The Milwaukee, Oregon native putting on a show for friends and family. Uh, I mean, she had a hot start and another hot start to this quarter. And if you're the pilots, you just cannot give her any room so quick. Four triples now for Whedon. Oh, good catch. Six now on the shot clock for Meek. Fowler loses the handle. Great defense by St. Mary's. And she's going to pick up a foul. Wow, she sure is. So Fowler picks up her first, team's first. That's a tough one. That's kind of a 50-50 ball. And this is a good substitution just to get her out, give her a little yep. bit of a break. I thought she looked a little bit exhausted in that little exchange right there. Frawley back on the floor for the Pilots. Hannafin, Kirasomi for St. Mary's. Portland in their matchup. Whedon is going to leave it. Good defense. St. Mary's trying to find the cutter, but Meek was there with the quick hands as Lindsay now will check in. Meek will have a seat. Good defense there by Meek of just getting her hands down. Anytime somebody goes back door, that's what they're looking at. Inside look too easy. That's one you got to make if you're St. Mary's. And Amy West, who just checked in, a little frustrated there. So Whedon picks up her second. Yeah, that's a oh, big Oh, man, foul. that sure is. And she's coming out wow. right away. Smart substitution. Cannot have found, uh, afford to have her not in the game in the second half by picking up a quick one. Right back on the floor. I mean, that is huge for St. Mary's. Your most dynamic scorer who stretches that defense and is a threat every time she touches the ball, sits with two fouls. Burnham will go to the line. Good job of Burnham turning that corner. Mid-range game, mid-range pull-up. That is her bread and butter. Mastora picks up that foul, her first, team's second. Dalton will check back in. Bamberger will have a seat. 
placing Ali Hamburg. To this point, JMO, every time Portland has made a push, St. Mary's has been able to respond. We'll see if the pilots can get over the hump here in the second quarter. You're absolutely right, and, and they've given up threes when that's happened. And, and if you're Portland right now with Whedon on the bench, you've got to take advantage of it. Burnham now with 10 points, 14th time she's hit double figures. Here comes the heat. Boy, that's lucky for St. Mary's until it's off the knee of Dalton. Another turnover, and that's Portland's defense. Absolutely, and Dalton there wanted a, a foul, didn't get it. That's their ninth turnover of the half. Mm. And we still have six and a half to go. St. Mary's averages about 17 turnovers a game, and their cough-ups allowing Portland to stay in this thing, turning into baskets on the other end. Wow. Burnham hits the deck, getting tangled with wrap, and it'll go the other way to the Gales. Well, you're absolutely right, and, and that's where you look like your defense right now for Portland is fueling your offense. You have 11 points off of their turnovers. That's a good no call right there, but you can see Portland struggling in their half-court offense right now, scoring-wise. Burnham, Lindsay, Shear, Frawley, Cochran on the floor for the Pilots. Rapp will bring it out. Mastora thinks twice about going against Lucy. Stepping through nice. and scoring is Rapp. A nice little step through move. I mean, the thing right now is you can see, again, we talked about the movement by St. Mary's. Nobody is standing still. And as soon as that offensive player catches the ball, they're trying to create, keeping the defense on their toes. Pilot defense forced to work really hard in the half court. Cochran looking inside, here's Burnham. Adding to her scoring total, you bet. 12 now for Burnham. Wow. Super smart. Using your length in that guard spot, posting him up. Burnham had a solid game against Gonzaga. Keeping it up as Cochran just plucks that rebound out of the air. And here comes Lindsay. Great rebound by Cochran. Frawley. And the hot shooting by the Pilots continue as Keeley gets it home. Three of their last three from the field getting quality looks. And again, you see their guards posting up. They do that so often. Good extra pass. Amy West didn't want it. Long ball, circle, circle, circles, and Mastora gets it home. And again, the Gales answer the Portland push. She passed up the layup, does the kick out, and that's a great time to shoot the three, but they make the extra pass and get an even better three. Remember, no Whedon on the floor for St. Mary's with the two fouls. So Dalton picks up her second, team's third. Be a quick timeout. Heck of a game here at the Child Center. Both of these teams, despite some turnovers, showing some great scoring. 33-28. Pilots chasing a little bit. Keely Frawley off the bench.
Child Center. Portland Pilots trailing St. Mary's 33-28. I still can't get used to the fact that Haley Andrews is over there and sweats. Brenna Green, it's just killing all of us, isn't it? It definitely is. The Portland Pilots haven't let up this season without starting point guard Haley Andrews. She tore her ACL a month ago, and they've only dropped one game since. Last year, she unfortunately went down with an ACL tear as well. And one of the things that was the hardest on Haley during that time was seeing some of her teammates that were not as engaged as they should have been. This time around, the coaching staff talked to the players about making sure that everyone is very intentional and valuing their time on the court, just as Haley would. Sure seems like that has come to fruition. And Anna Jamo, you guys have something special with Haley at halftime, right? You bet we do. Thanks, Brenna. Haley's going to sit down with us at halftime. You know, her heart's broken, but she is so engaged as another big triple, this time <laughs> from Addison Whedon, sister of Tacey, huh? Well, big swing there. Fowler misses the layup, and then you give up a three to put the Gales up eight. Turnover, steal, head up. Fowler's got her, and now switches off to Frawley. Wow, somehow, someway, that ball gets up and through Cochran. Kirasomi gets her home. And St. Mary's on an 8-0 run in the last minute right there, and a great timeout by Coach Meek. Just moments ago, it was 30-28. to St. Mary's lead was down to a deuce. And again, credit the Gales. They have taken all of Portland's counter punches and still delivering their own. Well, they're doing a great job defensively, creating havoc down low. Both the post players have had to give it up. And then offensively, I think they've done a great job of getting quality looks. They're taking people off, off the dribble, getting open looks from the three and knocking them down. And a team that's playing with a lot of confidence, like we talked about, Bamberger was not there for a majority of that first game against right. Portland. Right. And uh, playing with a lot of confidence right now and playing for something. I mean, everybody's trying to move up right now in the ranks when it comes to the tournament. You know, it's interesting, in game one, St. Mary's hit but one triple. That's the lowest three-point total in terms of game tallies for the Gales all season long. Well, they've got a bunch of them. St. Mary's has seven triples and counting, and that could they could eclipse their season high of 10. Well, and talking with Coach Meek, that is one of the keys, is to guard the three-point line, and, and that's something that they generally do a great job of. Obviously, right now, need to make some adjustments. Well, big second foul on Bamberger. Now she's going to have to sit along with sniper Tacey Whedon. So two of St. Mary's biggest offensive stars on the bench, two fouls apiece, 331 left to go in this second quarter. Well, the biggest part about that is can Portland take advantage of it down 10 with two big scorers on the bench? Frawley. Going back, high-low, extra pass, Lindsay, triple, not there. And ball stays with the Pilots. Good hustle by, uh, excuse me, Shear. Good inside-outside game right there. Got a good look from the three, just didn't knock it down. Lindsay can hit that shot. She is a three-point shooter. Pilots, one of the best scoring teams in the WCC, getting good looks tonight. And man, a lot of whistles blowing in this first half. So Fowler digging in to try and get position. Draws another foul, this time on Amy West. Well, the thing that, one of the things that makes Alex Fowler so dangerous is she can move, she can get, get deep down low. And if you are standing behind, like that just happened right there, you are going to get stuck and they're going to get her the basketball. So Fowler, who leads the conference in scoring, Rims in the first one. It's been a quiet first half for Fowler. She's got the five points, make it six, but a little cold from the floor. Well, I've seen her many times kind of start slow in the first half and come back and make a huge difference. You know, she, again, she's getting double teamed, triple teams. People are trying to take her out of her game. You bet. And she does a great job of just staying with it and adjusting at half. They'll dare somebody else to beat you. Yep. Not a bad philosophy, huh? Yeah. Steele now with seven on the shot clock. On the switch, Fowler, and all the way to the rim, not there. Into the hands of Fowler, pushing is Alex. She's got Burnham on the wing. Burnham takes the contact, and she'll go to the line. 
Another great attribute is you got Alex Feller with the rebound, your four stretch floor player bringing and leading the break right there, finds Burnham and does a nice job of lowering her shoulder and drawing the contact and getting to the free throw line. Rapp with her first foul teams, sixth as Burnham continues to add to her scoring total. What a first half for Maisie Burnham. Great first half. Mm. One of two. So 38-31, Burnham with 13 points now, matching what she did in the whole game against Gonzaga. St. Mary's without the services of Whedon and Bamberger, both sitting on the bench with the two fouls. Six on the shot clock. Kirasomi trying to get past Frawley, stepping through, wild shot, good D by Keeley. Good hustle on the uh, weak side rebound effort by West. Well, St. Mary's super scrappy right there. Again, didn't panic. Love, they love that step, step through move. Got to the rim, missed it. But people crashing from the weak side. Second opportunity here. Garrison on the floor now for St. Mary's. New opportunity for the Gales. Rap just flips it up, rimming out. Wow, Whedon. And Tacey back on the floor for St. Mary's. The Gales just out muscling the Pilots for those loose balls. Wow, I'm, I'm a little shocked to see her back in. Me with too. Two minutes in the lead. And if you're Portland, you got to go right at her at the other end. Runner, not there. Another offensive rebound. You got to credit St. Mary's. They just did not quit the last 30 seconds and finally got one home. You're absolutely right. They had missed five straight shots but stayed with it and got that last one to go. And Portland struggling from the field. No field goals in three and a half minutes. So Fowler's going to be whistled for an offensive foul. And if that's correct, that's going to be her second. Only the second team foul, but two fouls on Alex. Look at this battle, J-Mo. Yep. Yeah, that was. Yep. You can see her frustration of just getting banged every single second and just kind of lost her cool there for a second. Easy call for the official. But, uh, you know, I, I, I hear Coach Meek a little bit. I mean, she's getting pushed and banged every time she touches the ball and moves, quite frankly. So again, Whedon on the floor, Tacey with her sister, but Tacey's got the two fouls. The steal. Made the wrong read, turnover. Ninth cough up of the first half for St. Mary's, and yet they lead by nine. Yeah. Tacey out of the game now. Smart yep. substitution. I hear you. Very, very smart. Buck 12 left to go in this half. It's been a frigid couple of minutes for the Pilots. They trail by nine. Well, again, you go back and you evaluate this first half. A lot of their points off of defensive turnovers, making things happen in transition, not doing a great job in half court. Kaituu, good footwork, draws the foul. She comes in as Fowler sits down. Kaituu will go to the line. She's given them good minutes today. Addison Whedon with the foul, her first, sister of Tacey. So her first, team's seventh. And it'll be Kaituu to the line. Her first free throws of the game. 67% free throw shooter is Kaituu. And every point matters in a game like this when you're struggling to find some rhythm from the floor. You're absolutely right. And again, she's done a nice job coming in off the bench. Ooh, Master almost dragging that pivot foot. Close one. Yep. Under a minute to go in the second quarter. St. Mary's with the ball, with the lead. No Bamberger, no Tacey Whedon, both playing with two fouls. Dumping it inside, Hannafin looking for a cutter. Eight on the shot clock. Another St. Mary's turnover, and another foul will go against St. Mary's. Tacey Whedon picks up her second foul. Great anticipation by Kaitu coming over the top there to disrupt that pass. Burnham picks it up, and they get a quick foul in transition. Sends her to the free throw line. Again, times big, big points here when the shot clock is stopped. 
So that foul not going on Whedon, but against Croco, who has checked in for St. Mary's. Her first, making her first appearance of the game. A little heat from Bruno. 40, 34. Burnham, just a sensational first half. St. Mary's has been their, its own worst enemy with the turnovers and yet lead this ball game 40-34. Final moments of the half. Three on the shot clock. Whedon's got to put it up and scores. Nice behind the back move and a little pull up there. Wow, so Addison Whedon making Sister Tacy proud, beating the buzzer. And two times in this game to end the first and to end the second, St. Mary's has huge buckets. So it's 42-34, St. Mary's with the lead. Like I said, nice little penetration and a little comeback. Nice little step back and a big shot to go into the half. Addison Whedon, clutch shot with the five points. Well, you look at that half and no field goals for the final five minutes and 15 seconds. And, and uh, we're going to get a chance to talk to Coach Meek here in a second with Brenna Green. Brenna, take it away. Up and down first half for sure. What needs to change in the second half the most for your squad? Well, I mean, we're going to have to do a better job guarding the three-point line. I mean, they, they've gotten just hit too many, but got far too many attempts. That's a big one. And then we got to match our physicality. I mean, they're playing ultra physical, and, you know, we can't retaliate to it. we got to play through it, and we, we just are doing a great job matching their physicality right now. The shining star of that first half, Macy Burnham, 15 points already. She had 13 against Gonzaga. Zaga in the whole game last week. I know you had a conversation with her after that game. Just are you seeing anything from that conversation that's playing out on the floor that's helping her be so successful? Well, I, I think she's not playing hesitant. She's playing aggressive. And you know, that's what great players do is they respond to games like that. And uh, I think she's had a great response so far. Thanks so much, Coach Meek. Back to you guys. Brenna, Mike, thanks for taking the time. Mike will head to that locker room, make the necessary adjustments. You got a feeling that this is going to be a close one and down to the stretch, but give St. Mary some credit. They got rolled in game one at home against the Pilots. Well, they're leading this baby 42-34 at the break here at the Child Center.
missions. Driven by mission. Transformed by learning and serving. We are innovators. Researchers. Explorers. Change makers. And playmakers. Because that's what being a pilot is all about. This is Maria. Maria banks with CCCU. She has a first time home buyer savings account and a dog named Dave. She plays pickup soccer. She's about to get a mortgage and loves listening to music. She's just the kind of member that can take advantage of everything CCCU has to offer. And I just like what credit unions stand for. From customer to customized, bank locally, live simply with CCCU. Some people might call it a job, I call it a mission. Helping people get back on their way. When you're a roadside technician for AAA, every day is different. We're always ready to be there for you when your call comes in. I love seeing that smile on a member's face when you get them rolling again. It makes you feel good. At the end of the day, it's all about helping people. That's what keeps me going. Even when I was little, just growing up, I knew I wanted to play in college. I've kind of always just wanted to go here so I'd come out to the games and like sit in the stands and see them and like I genuinely believed that I could be one of them. Being on the court felt like nothing else mattered. I just thought it was fun. I've always been not the most athletic, not the tallest, not the skinniest. I know what it's like to feel like you can't do it, but you really can. I play to prove others wrong. I find purpose in making the people who supported me proud. Trust that all the hard work you put in is going to pay off. Go out there and try to prove each and every person wrong that's ever doubted you. Running a race is one of the most physically and mentally challenging things, but crossing that finish line, that feeling just can't be matched. Competing feels like I'm on top of the world. All it takes is one conversation. I'm just proud of their team performance. All it takes is one opportunity to be successful. Pick 10, now in the championship round. Like, what can you tell me? I mean, what a celebration to have. Being in the stands as a little girl and now being on the court, being able to represent myself and the game and University of Portland. Like, I used to see myself as just a basketball player. Now I see myself as a role model. Here's to the next gen.
We're at halftime in WCC women's basketball. The hometown Portland Pilots trailing St. Mary's 42-34. It's been a back and forth contest, but St. Mary's has basically led from the get-go. The good news is we've got Haley Andrews at the table with us. The bad news is we've got Haley Andrews at the table with us. You're supposed to be out on the floor, exactly. but that blown ACL a month ago has you on the shelf. You had successful surgery. Let the fans know how rehab is going and how you're feeling. Yeah, surgery went well. Um, I'm feeling on the better end of that and knowing that it was all successful and rehab started and I've begun the process again. So just excited to get healthy again, of course. Let's talk about your career here and what the University of Portland has meant to you. I mean, obviously, didn't end the way you wanted, but uh, you've been in situations like this before and you've been there for your team going into the tournament. But what has your experience been like? Oh, it's been amazing. Um, I think it's been every every college dream that I possibly could have had. And stepping foot here freshman year, I always wanted to make an impact no matter where I went to school. And I think. I've done that here, and I'm super grateful for all the coaches and the teammates that I've made along the way. All right. Let's see if I've got this right. 1,547 career points. That's number five in D1. 593 assists. That's number two as far as the Portland Pilots' career marks are concerned. 531 rebounds, 156 steals. <laughs> Can you take one of those buckets? Can you take one of those moments from all those points and rebounds and steals and give us a highlight, something that you're going to remember the most. You come on, I'm, know. You guys come already on. Know. I'm lobbing you a softball. Get it out of the park, kid. It was definitely, obviously, the Gonzaga semifinal game. Um, we called best, it. Yeah, <laughs> the best game of my college, yeah. Back in 2020. Yeah, and then even the San Diego game. Um, I know myself, I came up big in the end of that, too. So they're probably memories I'll keep for a lifetime, for sure. Well, you, you know, you, you go back to that, and it was conference tournament, and the conference tournament is coming up in two weeks. What do you think it's going to take for them to get back to that moment? Yeah, I mean, we've got so many good teams in the league this year, and you can tell by tonight, like, no matter what the standings are, everyone's coming to play and giving their 100% effort, uh, no matter who they're playing. So I think just playing our style of game and executing our defensive plan will put ourselves in good shape. Haley Andrews, one of the all-time greats to ever wear Portland Pilot gear. You'll always go down as the favorite to so many. Thanks for taking the time. Good luck with rehab. Gosh, we hate the way your career ended here uh, on the bluff, but so much deep appreciation for you. I appreciate you guys. You guys have been obviously following me along a long time, my four years here, and I couldn't be any more grateful enough for giving yeah. me such kind words. Um, but yeah, I appreciate all you guys. Love so. you, kiddo. All right, so we're gonna take a quick break. Haley Andrews, one of a kind, one of the all-time greats. It's 42-34, St. Mary's with the halftime lead. We'll come back in just a moment because the third quarter's just around the corner.
love going to the Baghdad. That is one sweet place to watch a movie and have a sarsaparilla. 42-34. Pilots trailing the visiting St. Mary's Gales going into the third quarter. Man, you got to credit these Gales. I mean, they came in having lost to the Pilots in convincing fashion not that long ago, and they've stepped it up. They really have, and I thought on the offensive end did a terrific job of breaking down the defense, and that is what Portland is known for. You look at the stats right there. I mean, rebounds are pretty even, but that three-point line, 7 of 11 from the three-point line to start this game, and uh, Tacey Whedon got it going for him. Brenna Green having a chance to catch up with Allison Fastnack. Brenna? Yeah, I told Allison, I asked the same question to Coach Meek. Up and down first half, what needs to change for you guys to keep holding this lead? She says this team has got to stop fouling. It is making their rotations a little bit difficult out there in terms of subbing. So that is a huge key for them in the second half. I did ask her about Tacey as well since she is the hometown kid. She says she's not surprised that she's playing so well so far. but And she does have the green light to go at any time. It is very special for her to be seeing Tacey playing like this in front of her family, though. So we'll see how she does in the second half. Back to you guys. Yeah, thanks. Special for all of us as the whistle blew immediately as you were talking, and it results in a quick hoop for the Pilots. Steele picked up her first foul, new life for the Pilots, and Fowler scores. Well, I'll tell you, that's what they need. They need Alex to get going offensively, but uh, I'll talk about green light. I'd be giving her the green light every time she touches the basketball. Heck yeah. So third quarter underway, 42-36. Pilots chasing. They've been trailing for most of this game. Another foul, this time against Rapp. That's her second. And man, the whistles have been blowing a lot in this game. Yeah, I mean, both coaches, can. you can see the frustration in the first half and now in this quick couple, or one minute in this third quarter. Allison not happy with how close it's being called. Nice execution. Easy pickings for Fowler, who's got four quick points in this quarter, now up to eight. Again, leads the conference in so many categories, including scoring. Steele looking at Cochran saying, yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> That's that rim protector right there. Changes the whole defensive scheme for Portland. Cochran reading things so well on the weak side, too. A smart play by Hannafin, who just gives herself a little bit of space. Beautiful behind the back and step back jumper. Smooth. Gales needed that one. 44-38, again, early in the third quarter here at the Child Center. Huge game for the Pilots as they are still in contention. Fowler just misses, and Ann one she'll go to the line. And she is getting better positioning to start this third quarter. She is, and nice just one dribble take to the rim. And I think that's going to be on Bamberger. I think you're right. It absolutely is going to be on Bamberger. And she's got three. Yeah. Oh, my. And now Allison Fastnack has some decisions to make. So Fowler misses the first. So let's, let's go back to the scenario, J-Mo. The Pilots going into the last three games of the regular season still have a shot at the conference title. They'll need some help with Gonzaga leading the conference, obviously, but also that all-critical second-place finish that gives them tournament first-round buys. Yeah, right now, if, if they win one out of the last four that they have and San Diego loses, it's automatically done. Or, excuse me, if they win one or if San Diego loses one, they are in that second place, but you're right. I mean, it's not far off to say that they end up in the position with the conference title or a tie for the conference title if Gonzaga doesn't play well. Fowler has come alive. She's got 11. Bamberger still on the floor with the three fouls. Here's Bamberger going right against Fowler. And Allie, aggressive, will go to the line. So Fowler picks up her third as the whistle's blowing nonstop. Alex will take a seat, unfortunate for the Pilots. Yeah, that's a big foul right there. And she's come out just blazing hot in this second half. Does such a great job of making adjustments. So here's Bamberger. A 75% free throw shooter is Allie, the transfer out of Washington. Most makes, most takes. In terms of cherry tosses for St. Mary's. 
This is Bo. Yep. So 44-41. Bamberger has been very quiet in this game, offensively playing in foul trouble. What a move by Katubu, but she can't finish the play. Really smart, though. She had Bamberger on her back, and she certainly doesn't want to pick up another one. Liana going right at her, yeah. really smart. Misses the layup, though. Bamberger avoids further foul trouble. Remember, Allie leads this club with nearly 15 points a pop and the 8.5 rebounds, but struggling to score at this point. Cochran from behind with the rejection. Meek picks it up, and here comes Portland. Well, she's just so long. You think you have an open lane to the rim, and all of a sudden from behind, ooh, Shear turns it over. Rap, good pick. Yeah. Playing free safety. Yeah. Dumping it inside. Bamberger didn't want it. Back rim and off is Rapp and another offensive rebound. St. Mary's doing a really good job on the glass. Steal with another long ball. Can't get it into the arms of Shear. And here comes Portland. Chance to tie. Portland very fortunate right there in my opinion. Burnham. Good cut. Yeah, but a nice lead by Kaitu. 17 points now for Burnham. Really nice cut. Extra pass. And there you see Portland kind of getting back to themselves more in an offensive flow, sharing the basketball and getting quality looks. So St. Mary's been a little chilly, and the Portland Pilots, despite Fowler getting into further foul trouble, has been able to cut the deficit to just one. We're in the third quarter. the Child Center. Pilots now only trailing by one against a gritty St. Mary's club. 44-43. Pilots to within one. And remember, Fowler on the bench with the three fouls. Yeah, 9-2 to two, uh, third quarter start here. And you're right, I think that's going to be a huge key going forward. With Alex Fowler sitting on the bench, he had a quick four points coming in and yep. then picked up a quick one. All right, so Bamberger sits now with the three fouls. I think that's a smart move by Allison Fastnack, but Whedon stays on the floor. She's got the two fouls. Mm. Mm. Portland's defense just looks more aggressive. Well, they're creating off of their defense, and that's what they're so good at. That's St. Mary's 12th turnover of the game, and Shearer doing a nice job of trying to post up, just not finishing. So Shear does a good job of staying with the play, though, and draws the foul from Steele. It's her second. Team's fourth already. Wow. 
The Pilots are going to be shooting potentially a lot of free throws. Another foul as Kaitu will go to the line. This time, it's Garrison, and she's got three. Well, again, a great job. Nice look, nice bounce pass right off the backside of Whedon. And Kaitu almost with an old-fashioned and one right there. So team's fifth foul. There's 6.15 left to go in the third. Kaitu will have a couple coming. Six points now for Kaitu, just over her seasonal average of 5.6 points a game. She only had the two points against Gonzaga, so contributing more tonight. Well, she's come in, especially with Fowler having to go out and giving them good minutes. Portland on a 7-0 run. And look at the scoreboard now. Pilots with the one-point lead. It's been a long time. First quarter since the Pilots have led this game. Well, you like the energy in which they came out at halftime. Yeah. They've made some adjustments, getting into a better flow. You know, and he talked about handing the physicality. I think he's absolutely right. And I think that they got a little frustrated in that first half. And a lot of fouls going against St. Mary's to disrupt their player movement. More whistles blowing. This time against Burnham, her first team second, and it's just hard for JMO. You played at the highest level, just hard to get into a flow when the whistles are blowing every other second. It seems. You're absolutely right. That's a tough call right there. Burnham kind of got squeezed on a screen, and Whedon kind of tripped at the same time and fell, and she got called for one. See if St. Mary's can get Tacy Whedon back in the flow. She had all those triples in the first half. Quiet this third quarter. Step back with five seconds on the shot clock. Wow, Hannafin gets her home. I'll tell you, that is really hard to defend, and she has got that move down. Nice, nice move. Hannafin coming off a good game against Santa Clara just last weekend. And Kai Tuu again going to the line as she aggressively takes it right at the players down low for St. Mary's. So Kroko gets her super smart, a little split screen, and Kai Tuu takes it herself, hangs in the air. Crafty little move right there to the rim, un unable to finish, but again goes to the free throw line. Just free throws galore for the Pilots. Kai Tuu very comfortable from the charity stripe. And she's aggressively wanting that ball down low, J Mo. She knows th the worst that's going to happen is she's going to go to the line for a couple. A great job of Bruno getting the offensive board, but turns it over right away. He's going a little too fast. No numbers for Dalton, so she's going to leave it. Kirasomi looking for help. Kroko almost gave it up. Wild possession and bailed out is Kirasomi. She'll go to the line as the foul is going to go against the Pilots. And Kaitu Kai picks up her second. Well, you see the nice back cut. Bruno gets a hand on it. And then just an easy one there. Yeah. Just comes down too hard on that. Kaitu's second, team's third, as Kirasomi, the redshirt senior out of Australia. Both clubs with a lot of players from down under. Good board. Oh, beautiful. Wow. And Burnham just continues to light it up. She's got 19. That was a beautiful catch. Spin move in transition. I'll tell you, she is so comfortable tonight offensively. And you love to see that. She kind of was out of her sorts here last couple games. Doing a terrific job. Good defense by the Pilots. So back and forth we go. Pilots with the one-point lead. Wrap, cut off. And St. Mary's responds again. Well, I'll tell you, they're doing a great job of penetrating to the paint and making things happen. Hannafin, a really solid game for St. Mary's. 49-48, Gales. Kaitu, back rimming off. Ball up for grabs. And the officials have no idea, and they're going to call it a jump ball possession arrow favoring St. Mary's. 
Well, that's unfortunate. Neither one of them saw it, so they called the jump ball. Possession goes to the Gales. We have immediate timeout on the floor. That's a tough one. Yeah, West was smart. She basically said, hey, it, it, it touched the pilots. She, she was, I don't think anybody knows who it, la it last went off of, but possession arrow favoring St. Mary's. So when we come back, it'll be the Gales ball. Check the spin move. How sweet is that? Macy having herself a game. smiling too if I were you Maisie Burnham my goodness what a game for this kid 19 points and counting and nearing her career high of 25 oh she's been terrific tonight like I said kind of struggled a little bit offensively the last couple weeks but uh, coach Meek sat down with her the other day and they had a great talk and she just looks really comfortable aggressive looking for a shot Last year, super sub, this year starting every game. And she has really risen to the occasion. Bamberger back on the floor and immediately scoring. Well, Portland again, not in good rotation right there. Gives up an easy one for Bamberger down low. Boy, could St. Mary's use that young lady to get things going. Playing with the three fouls, Bamberger, but she is so critical to this St. Mary's offense. Lindsay on the floor is going to leave it for Bruno. Ten on the shot clock. Burnham almost carries it. Trying to wheel. Oh, my goodness. So Bamberger picks up her fourth. And it was a bailout foul as Burnham was really struggling to get anything off. Well, that's unfortunate for the Gales. That's a huge loss for them. Man. 11 and a half minutes or 13 and a half minutes they're going to be without. St. Mary's foul. Oh, I don't know. I couldn't tell by that angle. That's and Burnham tough. really was kind of caught in no man's land. And this is a huge break for the Pilots because Burnham not only gets a couple of tosses, but Bamberger is now going to sit for a long, long time. Yeah, my guess is she doesn't come back in maybe until five minutes left in the game. And we'll see where the, you know, what the score yeah. is at that point. 51-50 as Burnham continues to light it up. Good D, poke checked away by the Pilots, a chance to reclaim the lead. The Rap just got herself stuck in this corner and just trying to make the deep pass. Good hands by the Pilots. Three minutes to go in the third quarter. Bamberger on the bench with four fouls for St. Mary's. Mm. Burnham can't get it home. One of the few misses. And remember, Fowler is sitting and has been sitting for a while for the Pilots. She playing with three fouls. Rapp is going to leave it for West. Whedon misses a wide open three. She usually hits that in her sleep. And here comes Frawley. Well, Portland very fortunate yep. right there. 
Good take by Kaituhu is able to get up and over West, who had a little length on her, but Kaituhu in double figures. The 10 points, and that's the 14th, excuse me, that is the sixth double figure game of the season for Kaituhu. Portland reclaims the lead. What a great cut, and Steele is rewarded with the gimme. Well, I'll tell you, Portland, in the, late in the shot clock, multiple times tonight, has had miscommunication defensively and given up easy looks. Steele now with seven, right at her seasonal average. Good answer by St. Mary's, Kaituu inside, and going right up against West again. She's got 12. Well, heck, she's gone left. Now she takes him to the right side, finishing with both hands, doing a terrific job. So Fowler is in foul trouble, and Kaitu bails out the Pilots with a huge stint off the bench. Gales will keep possession. Sheer and Meek back on the floor for the Pilots. Mastora in for the St. Mary's Club, along with Hannafin. Well, you can see that Portland's really trying to not allow any three-point shots. Because St. Mary's was so successful, but they are giving up maybe some rotation and easy looks down low. That's been a long time since St. Mary's has hit a triple. Yep. Nice All the way to the cup is Mastora, who comes off the bench and scores immediately. She's got five at her seasonal average. The lead is one for St. Mary's. One minute left in this back and forth third quarter. Burnham is gonna flip it. Meek. Kaituu, extra pass. Shear. And now Farley with seven on the shot clock. Thought Meek would pull the trigger on the three. Instead, the runner is true. Well, nice job by Meek. Nice little up fake. They have to respect because she's got range to three and a nice little runner in the, in the lane. So easy call to make on that foul against Frawley. Her first, team's fourth. So Cochran back on the floor for the Pilots. 56-55. Portland with the one-point lead. Heck of a third quarter as both teams have just been exchanging punches and counter punches as it's been all game, it seems. Yep, great, great third quarter. Not much of a difference between shot and game clock, about two seconds. St. Mary's is five of the, oh, nice anticipation. St. Mary's has hit five of their last seven from the field. Steele with eight on the shot clock. Another turnover. Yep. You know, and if Mastura was thinking, she would have just let that thing dribble out of bounds to eat more of the clock. 14th turnover in the game for the Gales. Golden opportunity for the Pilots with plenty of time here in the half court to extend the lead. Meek will take the high pick. Mikkel leaves it. and counting for Maisie Burnham, who's knocking on the door of a career night, and what a stick to end the third quarter. Terrific execution off the on ball. She hits the down screen and then just knocks one home from the three. St. Mary's had buzzer beaters in the first half. Well, it's Burnham's turn, and the Pilots have the lead.
What a game for Maisie Burnham. Ends the third quarter with that bomb. She's got 24 points, J-Mo. She's just one from tying her career high set at Eastern Washington. Yeah, done a terrific job scoring at all different levels. Shooting from the three, posting up. Again, just super aggressive, having a terrific night. And then more importantly, no threes for St. Mary's in that quarter. Great defense by the Pilots. So fourth quarter underway. Bamberger on the floor for St. Mary's, playing with four fouls. Alex Fowler on the floor for the Pilots, playing with three fouls. This is going to be interesting. Cochran off the great feed from Fowler. I'll tell you, they do such a great job of passing within each other. Fowler gets doubled. Cochran cuts from the high post and an easy pass. So Shearer is going to pick up that foul early in this fourth quarter, her first, team's first. Again, whistles have been blowing all night long. Can Bamberger stay on the floor for a while for St. Mary's? Whedon, who was so hot to start this game, not getting those three-point looks. Good board by Cochran. Here comes Burnham. You know, it's, it's interesting, you look at, you know, we talked about all the whistles that have gone off, and St. Mary's has only shot five free throws. Unbelievable play by Fowler. She's got 13, the footwork there, reading the defense and getting the reverse home. 63-55, biggest lead of the game for the Pilots. Remember, they trailed by 10 in the first half. Steele is gonna leave it. Addison Whedon, nothing there. Offensive rebound, the Gales. They've done a nice job on the offensive board. Almost a travel, travel by Hannafin. Whedon turns it over. Tacey frustrated there, and here comes Meek. 15th turnover again for them in the game, and good hands. Fowler gives it up. Steele orchestrating the run. Another offensive board. Can Tacey, yes, there's the first three. It feels like in forever for Whedon. All of her points, 15 coming beyond the arc with threes. Well, and, and St. Mary's again crashing the offensive glass, getting that kick out and an easy three. Whedon now with the five triples. Her career high is seven long balls. St. Mary's could use some more of those. That is for sure. Burnham. Burnham, career high, baby. Maisie Burnham with the game of her life with 26 and counting. With just a terrific drive, hanging in the air, finishing with the left hand. What a game for Maisie Burnham. Transfer out of Eastern Washington. Bamberger going against Cochran. Alley spinning, blocked by Cochran, staying home and playing the big D. There's that length, that rim protection. Great job by Cochran. Just stay and put. Ooh. Jump ball, possession arrow again favoring St. Mary's. We talk about physical play, there it is right there. Both teams going at it. St. Mary's is gonna get that jump ball. Corker now with a couple of blocks, making her presence felt on the defensive end. She'll take a seat. Lindsay back on the floor for the Pilots. It'll be Lindsay and Fowler, Burnham, Bruno, and Frawley for the Pilots. Timeout, Portland. 65-58, still a ton of time left to go in this one. Well, we can update you really quick on some scores. Yes. Gonzaga, 67, Pacific, 44. Santa Clara, down one to BYU, 56-55. USF, 42-34. Do we know what quarter any of these games are Fourth in? Fourth quarter. Okay. All right, so we'll take a quick break. 65-58, pilots with the lead. 7.09 left to go in this fourth quarter.
finish out of Lucy Cochran. has got the four points, but big five rebounds and a couple of blocks. Again, you, you, you just love what she does for this club, healthy after missing so many games with that foot injury. Well, she just changes them defensively. If she doesn't get blocked, she's altering shots. You know, that rim protection is huge. And Portland has come out in their matchup. They have mixed it up quite a bit. 65-58. Good job by Cochran. We can now confirm that Lucy's got the three rejections as the stats have been modified and updated as, as uh, Fowler now has 15 after a very slow first half. Took some contact on that one. Yeah, she sure did. And, and, and there's been a lot of contact in the game. And, you know, we talk about it left and right. She's getting everybody's best defender, double teamed, and doing a good job of handling it. Fowler with over 2,000 points, number one scorer and rebounder in the Division I era for the University of Portland. As Lindsay picks up that foul, easy call to make. Her first, team second. Yeah, a little late on that switch, stepping out. Easy call for the officials. Alex Fowler leading the conference in scoring, made free throws, field goal percentage, and steals. Think about that now, you're big. Fifth in assist to turnover ratio, that's crazy. Well, and the thing I talked about it earlier, I mean, she's their four player. She's running the break, she's first on the press. She's just so versatile. Bruno, three. Scrum for that ball into the hands of the Gales. Garrison finally corralling it. And a three minute plus scoring drop for St. Mary's not helping the cause. Well, I think you credit Portland's defense. Intensity level has been so much better in the yep. second half. There's a nice move right there. Boy, it sure was an and one. Nice game for Hannah Rapp, the sophomore out of Australia. And Lindsay's gonna pick up another foul, and it's a three-point opportunity for Rapp. Great job of just getting to the paint, little spin back. Lindsay laid on the recovery and picks a, picks a, up a regular foul and one situation. Rapp only started a few games last year, didn't score much, and this year just having a terrific year, a career best for Rapp. But Whedon has been so quiet. She had the triple a few moments ago, but remember the blistering start in the first half for Whedon. Fowler quickly going against Bamberger. Another foul, this time against Whedon. Good cutting by the Pilots to draw the foul. Good cut, but I actually think Fowler had Bamberger. And Bamberger's got four. She cannot have fouled to afford to pick up another one. And she's got to go right at her. I thought she had an opportunity to score here, but again, nice little backdoor cut. Boy, I'm with you, call. though. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you, J-Mo. That's when you just go right at Bamberger. Even if you don't make it, you just go right at her the way the, the refs have been blowing the whistle. Yep. Here's Fowler against West, spinning, not scoring. Bruno coming down with it. Let's see what we got here, if it's a foul or a jump ball. Jump ball, so pilots will keep the ball in their back pocket. 67-60, 503 left to go in the fourth quarter. Good hustle play by Bruno. Oh. Lindsay throws it away, and Whedon comes on to the half-court stripe and sets up. Well, a lot of time left in this ball game, and with the uh, the way the Gales can shoot for three, you're never out of this game. Frawley wanted to take Whedon out of her three-point range. Nine on the shot clock. Bamberger is going to leave it. Steal. Whelan and Dillon inside just chucked up. And Whedon is able to score something besides a three. She's got 17. Well, a great job of just getting to the rim. There's a quick three by Frawley. Too quick right there. 67 62. Whedon. Oh, she was very frustrated by that. Wasn't close, and she knew it was a wide open look. 
And Portland in a little bit of a scoring drought again. No buckets in two and a half minutes. Casey Whedon from Milwaukee, Oregon. Tons of family and friends watching her last performance here in Portland. Look at the quick wheel and deal by Fowler right at the rim to beat West. She's got 17. Well, great duck in by Fowler right there, and she's so good at just catching and going straight to the rim so no double team can come and get her on that point. So again, a quiet start for Fowler, then a little foul trouble, and now the points are starting to mount up. She's got 17, almost at her seasonal average. Well, look how deep she's getting into the paint, and if you've got somebody on her back, she's got the speed to get by people. She can shoot the three, but just a great finish of catch and go right to the rim. What a great pass, though, by Cochran. Those two have worked back and forth, complementing each other. First, it's followed with a great pass inside to Conqueror, Cochran, and then the Aussies combine it again with Cochran to Fowler. They have, they're, they're so good together, and they read each other so well. Both, you know, Fowler and Cochran get double teamed. Uh, Alex more so than, than Lucy, but both recipients of just great passing between each other. <laughs> good shot of Shantae Leggins at the game. Big men's and women's double header on Saturday here at the Child Center. 69-62, 3.36 left to go in this fourth quarter. Oh, good defense. Great defense inside by Fowler. Uh-oh. Is Alex bleeding? She got popped in the face. I think, I don't see... Any blood, it just looked like she was stunned for a minute, J-Mo. Well, she came up kind of holding her arm. I don't know if she hit her elbow on the floor. Mm. Yeah, she kind of landed hard on her elbow. So four on the shot clock for Whedon. Does Kirasomi know? Well, Rapp had an idea, but she was short on that shot put attempt. Burnham is gonna leave it. Sheer, wide open. Not there, Fowler just gets out muscled for that rebound. Well, and a, another quick three by Portland and certainly a shot that Shear can hit. Shooting very well from the three-point line, over 40%. But time and score right now, I don't think you need a rush that you're gonna get that at any point in your offense right now. So a turnover for St. Mary's, 17th. That's basically their seasonal average. But in this kind of a game, so close, you just cannot afford the unforced errors. Especially down the stretch here. And Portland's got 21 points off of their turnovers. St. Mary's has lost some close conference games. They're in another close one here. And that turnover, let's see if the Pilots can take advantage. Fowler. Oh, sweet kiss off the glass. 19 points. Can you say MVP? Absolutely. I just don't know if there's anybody else that has her skill set and how active and athletic she is. She's just so versatile. Follow with the rebound. The last 10 years, West Coast Conference MVPs have come from Gonzaga or BYU every single year but one. When Yasmin Robinson Baycoat from Pepperdine won it, in 2019. This could be Alex Fowler's year as well. I, I agree 100%. There's a lot of good players in this conference, but she's really done a great job and the impact that she has on this squad and where this Portland squad has come. Foul away from the ball. So as Hannafin picks up that foul, her first team second, and you gotta remember Haley Andrews goes down. She blows out that knee a month ago, and Fowler has to carry more, even more of the burden. And one, Burnham carrying the burden tonight. Well, you're absolutely right. I mean, you look at the fact that, you know, for the beginning of the season, they did play without Andrews, and they had themselves in a nice flow. And again, Meek just finds Burnham nice little touch pass. And that'll be five fouls on Allie Bamberger, who could never get going in this game because of foul trouble, and Burnham has had herself a career night. Yeah, unfortunate for the Gales, because she's a great player, just like you said, could not get into any rhythm. Burnham, season high and made free throws with eight and 29 points, a career high. What a game for Maisie Burnham. 
blocked. Another rejection for Cochran, but following up nicely is Rapp. Rapp doing a nice job of staying with that play. So finally, St. Mary scores, ending a three-minute drought. And Whedon picks up her fourth, team's fourth. And you gotta foul if you can't steal if you're St. Mary's. You're absolutely right. Buck 28 left to go in the fourth. Largest lead for the game. You're looking at it for the Pilots. Remember, they trailed by 10 in the first half. Now they lead by 10. What a turnaround. Lucky break there for the Pilots. Mm -hmm. Fowler is just getting manhandled out there. Meek cannot believe it. Well, the thing about it is you just certainly don't want to see somebody get hurt. So the turnover is going to go against Portland. Actually, it's going to be a timeout. Yeah, he called a timeout. Got it. Late in that clock. Yep. They're going to have three seconds on the shot clock. And I, I can't help but think maybe Mike calls that timeout. Watch, check the sequence out here. I mean, the first one was a definite yep. foul. Sac second one got the ball, but she's just, every time she touches the ball, she's getting hit and moved. The, the whistle is blown with much lesser contact than that. And if you're Fowler or Meek, anybody wearing, well, St. Mary's or Pilot gear, you got to figure the whistle's blowing, but not that time. Mm -hmm. And Coach Meek, you know, talked about the physicality at halftime. I thought Portland really did a good job of coming out of half and reestablishing themselves defensively, playing physical, playing with a lot of boys on the offensive end. But Alex Fowler has been manhandled down low. Yeah. She's done a great job in foul trouble herself and a great response in this later part of the second half. You know, you can't help but load up on Burnham with the career high 29 points, 9 of 12 from the field. And of course, Fowler re responding after kind of a slow start with the 19 points. But I look at Mikkel Meek, only four points, but how about it? Four assists, no turnovers. You look at Cochran, four points, seven boards, and all those blocks. Oh, nice job of Sheer going to the rim at the buzzer. And you're absolutely right. You know, you look at those numbers, and they don't, they're not these huge numbers that make huge difference, but it's all the little things and everybody doing what they need to exactly. do as a collective team doing their job, playing their role, understanding their role, more importantly. This is going to be a great Portland Pilot victory. Yep. One that they need with the stakes so high. Yeah, Gonzaga's rolling tonight, so maybe they're not thinking about the regular season conference championship, but they are thinking about that second seed and two buys going into the tournament action. You're absolutely right, and, you know, getting yourself to the semifinal is huge, not having to play all the way through, and... Taking care of business. I mean, talk, we talked to Coach Meek, and it's handle yourself day in and day out. You're not going to be able to control anybody else. Just control what we do. So up next for the Pilots, they'll stay at home and take on a very tough Pacific team while St. Mary's will head to Gonzaga. And Pacific really playing well as of late. And, you know, we, we saw St. Mary's come in and play very well today. Did not have a great yep. second half. People in foul trouble, took away the three-point line. But any given night in this conference, people can be beat, and that's huge. Fowler will take a seat. She and Burnham have been unbelievable, especially Maisie Burnham, a career-high 29 points. Terrific effort. I love to see that breakout game for her too, because again, like I talked about, she had just been a little bit quiet here and there, kind of pressing a little bit, but it did a great job today. Meek going deep into his bench for the final few seconds of this one. Pilots don't want to foul. They've got this game won. 10 seconds left in regulation. West down low. Hopefully St. Mary's won't foul either if they can't make the swipe. Well, that's a big win for the Pilots after that first half. 
And we, when we talked about the fact that they needed to win one and San Diego possibly losing one, well, they lost to USF tonight 66 to 55. And then BYU defeats Santa Clara 73 to 65. All right, fans, take a look at the video board. And that, that should secure, no matter what, a semifinal bite is to Monday for the Pilots. It is absolutely huge for Portland. 77-66 the final. The Pilots trailing by 10 in the first half, coming from that deficit to win by 11. I think their adjustments at halftime, taking away the three-point shot, really defensively spreading it out, playing with a lot of press, you know, pressure. Uh, St. Mary's turning the basketball over and two big halves for Maisie Burnham offensively. St. Mary's had seven triples in the first half, won the rest of the way, and then Burnham continued her scoring and Fowler got red hot and rolling but this night belongs to Maisie Burnham who is standing by with our Brenna Green. Brenna? Macy a career high 29 for you tonight. Last game against Gonzaga 13 before that three points three points and eight points. Does tonight feel a little cathartic for you out there? Yeah I mean it's just fun playing with my teammates. We share the ball so well so that's why I can do what I do and you know we have such great scores that it's hard to guard everyone so it was just a fun night all around. Coach Meek told us that he had a conversation with you after that Gonzaga game. Was there anything from that conversation that helped you perform the way you did tonight? I mean Coach Meek is just a, such a great help and he tells you exactly what you need to get done and you know it's just so fun to play for him and I just think you know every day we're going to get better and we're going to bounce back from that Gonzaga win and hopefully get him again. You guys get the win tonight, which means you secure a two seed or higher for that WCC tournament. How nice is it going into these final three games, knowing you've got that double bye to the semis? I mean, it's huge, but we got some big road games coming up. We have a home game coming up that's huge, and so we just got to take it game by game, and we're not done yet, so it's fun. Give me your best pitch for Alex Fowler as the league's MVP. 19 points tonight, battling through so much. Oh, Alex is a beast. People are all over and they can't stop her. So, I mean, she's MVP hands down. I don't know what else to say. She's just an animal. And it, she's a great teammate. So, um, yeah, nothing else to say. Well, there you got it, WCC coaches. <laughs> just listen to Macy. Um, people don't know that I covered her in high school, so we have to end this interview. I covered her in high school in Spokane with uh, Go Lancers, yeah. right? Go Lancers! There we go. Back to you guys. Oh, you homers. You homers. Thanks, you guys. <laughs> Appreciate that. Uh, yeah. So, Maisie calling Alex a beast. a beast. I love it. I love it. Well, you get a chance to take at, a look at some of the stats. I mean, shooting 52% from the field. Great job. Assist to turnover ratio was decent. And just did a nice job of taking the three-point line away from the Gales in that second half. Biggest difference of the game. Maisie Burnham, career high 29 points. Alex Fowler coming alive in the second half despite foul trouble with 19 points. Cochran with the eight boards and the four block shots. And Mikkel Meek doesn't score a whole lot, but you look at the five assists, zero turnovers. I, I think your point is huge. I mean, you have all these different role players that are coming in, making huge adjustments, playing well together. I thought. You know, Liana Katu was really yes. good off the bench today. 12 points, five boards. And when somebody is in foul trouble or somebody's not playing very well, they're stepping up. They're doing what they need to do to figure out and win. And that's exactly what they did tonight. Pilots opportunistic, taking all those St. Mary's turnovers and turning them, turning them into points. Every little thing went Portland's way because they created their own opportunities in that second half. Upcoming schedule for the Pilots. Well, you look at their upcoming schedule. They have Pacific in here on Saturday, which will be a big game. 3 o'clock, it's senior night. And then at BYU and San Diego, big road trip right there. And then obviously down to Vegas, uh, what WCC uh, tournament. But big three games left. And I think the biggest thing about that is to make sure that they're playing well going into to Vegas in March. That's right. It's all about momentum right now. Going for that double by in the tournament no doubt about it but you want momentum as much as that heading into that kind of high stakes poker scenario in vegas and i think the other thing about that too ann is we we keep thinking okay so they've got that secured second place but they still have a chance to tie for first place with gonzaga depending on what happens in the next couple of games
They need some help, that's for sure. Yep. And a Gonzaga loss or two. All right, that's a wrap from the bluff. Portland coming from 10 points down to defeat St. Mary's 77 to 66. Eight straight wins now for the Pilots over St. Mary's. Quality conference win, or eight straight wins, excuse me, for the Pilots. Quality conference win. Pilots go to 13 and two in WCC play. Boy, that's big. All right, for Jennifer Mountain, Brenna Green, and our entire broadcast crew, I'm Ed Schott saying so long from the Child Center on the bluff. Maisie Burnham, career night, 29 big points. Thanks for joining us tonight. We love having you on board. This was a fun one. Have a great weekend, everybody. Pilots win.